Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Councillor Alan Law. I'm the Chairman of the Overview and Scrutiny Management Commission. Uh, members of the Commission present here this evening are Councillors uh, Abs, who is substituting for Councillor Brooks, Councillor Cole, James Cole, uh, Councillor Lee Dillon, who is online. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Councillor Dillon has got COVID, uh, so he can't fully participate, but with the, uh, the Chairman's discretion, he can uh, participate, uh, but not vote or propose on any motions. Um, Councillor Marino, Councillor Masters, Councillor Claire Rolls, and Councillor Tony Vickers. Uh, we have uh, awaiting another member who may turn up, uh, Councillor Hurley, but I haven't seen him as yet. So other members in attendance this evening are Councillors Tony Linden, who is in the room, uh, Councillor Hard Wollaston, who's here by Zoom, and other council officers present to advise and support the meeting are Nigel Lynn, the chief executive online, Joseph Holmes, uh, executive director resources. I believe these people are all online. Uh, Sarah Clark, John Wynn Stanley, um, who's the strategic director of environment, Paul Henry, who I know is here and will be, uh, be, be, be uh, involved with one of the, the items. And uh, Paul uh, Martindale, uh, who's a consultant in the, uh, from the leisure paper. I would also like to welcome uh, Mark Evans and Rob Coles from the Canal and River Trust. Uh, if they can just wave at me. Or yeah, online. hi, good evening, everybody. Hi, good evening, they're online. And we have here uh, Claire Poulton and Luke Dawson from Sustrans. And I can see them there waving. Thank you, welcome. Uh, Gordon Oliver to my left is the, the clerk for the meeting, and the meeting is being live streamed by YouTube. And Vicky Phoenix, further to my left, is the, the Zoom host. Uh, so before we uh, start, can I just finish my introduction? I'm just, uh, is this Facebook broadcast chairman? I'm, I'm oh, thank you for that. I, I'm just going to continue and I'll hope that the officers can work that out. Okay. So, uh, unfortunately, the next section is to explain to members of the public who are listening. Well, we appear to have a, a bit of a technical issue, but I, I think I should continue. Otherwise, we're going to be uh, hanging ourselves in limbo until something's fixed. Uh, you have to try and fix that in the background. Uh, if there are members of the public and they can hear me, I'll just explain. Uh, for their benefit, that tonight's meeting has been held over both Zoom and with councillors present in the in the meeting room. Uh, please, can I ask everyone present in the meeting to make sure they have their microphone in front of them, and when they are speaking, to speak directly into it. Uh, if we hear the evacuation alarm, I, I, I've got another hand up. Yes, it's councillor, now it's now working online. Thank you very much. Uh, so for people in the room, if we do hear the evacuation alarm this evening, you must leave the building immediately. So please follow any instructions given by the trained officers present and proceed by the safe emergency exit. The assembly point is the Newbury Station multi-storey car park. Uh, anyone requiring assistance down the stairs will be assisted accordingly. Uh, before we proceed, do any members have any questions about the way this meeting will be conducted? No. Good, fine. Okay, do we have any apologies, uh, Gordon? Yes, Chairman, uh, we've received apologies from Councillor Jeff Brooks and Councillor Adrian Abs are substituting, also from uh, Councillor Lynn Doherty, Councillor Eric Pattenden, Sue Halliwell, Andy Sharp, Sarah Clark, and Councillor Lee, Lee Dillon, as you noted, is unable to join in person, but is joining the meeting via Zoom. Right, thank you. Uh, so I'd now like to move on to the, uh, the minutes of the last meeting, please. Uh, I'm assuming everyone's had a good old look at them. Any comments anywhere? If you have, show a hand. I've seen one. I think they're excellent, Chairman. I'd be happy to propose that we accept them. If, oh, thank uh, you very much. Uh, anyone happy to second that proposal? Councillor uh, James Cole. Uh, so no amendments proposed. Thank you very much. Uh, I shall now sign this hard copy. Hand it over to you, Gordon. There you go. 
Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, it should be it should be declarations of interest, isn't it? Yeah. That's actions for. Let's go through actions from the minutes. Uh, can, I don't see any hands up. Can we put hands up, please? Uh, can we put the? <laughs> I see I see visual hands going up. I've actually got a pillar in front of me, so it's difficult to see everybody. So could I ask people who want to speak? Could they just use their Zoom hands, please? But Councillor Vickers, you wanted to say something. Yes. Uh, just um, sound language. We've had apparently some changing legislation since this. Uh, well, let's get down to that first. That's you. You've jumped ahead a little bit. You've jumped ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we're we're about to comment on the actions. Yeah. So action, action items from previous meetings. Action fifty. Any further update from Councillor Dillon? Gordon. Okay. Uh, I think we should, uh, I, I'm actually not sure why that particular item is, uh, is, on, is on this paper, actually. It's an action on Councillor Dillon, and it's an action with him to uh, interact with the executive. Uh, I think it came up, it's way back in last August. So, uh, is, Councillor Dillon, are you online? And can you, do you want to comment? I'm not sure who can hear. She's having problems. Okay, so you may be having problems. Okay, but anyhow, I, I, as I say, I don't know why that's still on. Uh, the next one, which is a review of the council's response to COVID, that's in progress, uh, and it was included in a revised work program from September onwards. So um, that, that's been action, but you could keep it on. Uh, operation review of communications and engagement strategy, that's outstanding. Um, Operation Review of Communications and Engagement Strategy. With it. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Feedback concerning the search engine. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Uh, feedback concerning the search engine and the council's website and the digital team. And that's down as completed. Concerns have been fed back uh, and, and detailed conversations have been held with relevant members. Now, Gabrielle, you're here. <laughs> I, think I, I think from my comments, I personally am a relevant member. And I have not been consulted, so I'd like to stick. I'd like that action to stay on, please, because I, I not, I, I personally can't agree that that action is completed. Okay, I'd, I'd agree, Chairman. Thank you. Everybody made the do, same. Do you point. want to be consulted as well? Well, so, I, I mean, I was going to make the point that that it does come up in the in one of the tasks that we're proposing to form a task group, which I think encompasses some of this yeah. whole business. Yeah. So I think we will see progress that way it does it, it does but you but we did have a specific action and uh, uh yeah okay uh operational review of communications and engagement this is the british sign language i've not, I got this down as outstanding tony you want to say something yeah i just I, there was something on the news last week um the um that the, the uh, uh hearing impaired were celebrating some you know landmark change in legislation which recognizes this as a language or something i forget the details but when i saw this on the on the agenda i thought does this change anything i don't know whether any officers know that i, I don't think it has it's, it's outstanding it's been assigned as it says to democratic services oh, well they'll pick uh, any and, change and, and, of legislation up i expect yeah we, we should we'll keep this on here so uh, it'll have to come back to us eventually okay uh, and the last item again, again, is operational review of communications. It was to ask the ICT team to remove Microsoft Internet Explorer from la members' laptops. I don't recall that. Does anybody recall that one? Yes, Chairman. It was. Um, I think it's something that, that when the internet was opening, it was opening in. Uh, Windows Explorer rather than the Edge. And I think the ICT service has confirmed that the desktop team is working on an update that will remove that from that shortcut from the PCs and it should take place in the next few weeks. Okay, because I know, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I go into Internet Explorer, it brings me into the intranet, which then gets me into the council's website. And I maybe it's just me, but I don't know any other way of doing it. So if we take Microsoft Explorer off, I better have an alternative way. We should be able to. Okay, fine. We'll just leave that on in the meantime. Okay, so that's all the actions. 
Right. Well, before we go into the main body of the meeting, declarations of interest. Anyone got any declarations of interest to make with the, the papers that are coming up tonight? Tony? Yeah, um, I don't think any of them are prejudicial um, or pecuniary, but I am a member of the Newbury Town Council, which is very much engaged with uh, the whole business of the Kennet Navan Canal, as is the local access forum, of which I'm a member because they're important recreational resources throughout the um, throughout Berkshire, indeed. Well, West Berkshire. Okay. Thank you for that. Anybody else? No. Council. Um, I um, like to declare an interest that I live on the canal and pay a license to the Canal and River Trust. Uh, as a result, yeah. So I, I, that's probably that's that's probably personal and prejudicial, actually. <laughs> so I, if that is the case, uh, well, if we, we we don't have a legal officer here, but uh, I think I know enough about it to uh, to point out. I think you have to leave the room for that item. Uh, Members decide for themselves, don't they, well, Chairman? They do, We've they had do, that before. They do. They do. Members decide for themselves, but you've, you've, you've had my pseudo-legal advice on that. Okay. Uh, so then we move uh, on. Chairman, to, uh, chairman my, um, might I... Nigel Lynn, sorry. Online. Yes, Nigel, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I think on that, on that issue, if I can help Council Masters, um, because it's to do with the nature of the report as well, I, I believe, and the, and the nature of this one, um, if I was asked uh, if by council masters beforehand, I would probably say stay for the de debate, but don't vote would be my suggestion because of the nature of the of the, you know, this isn't a, um, how can I put it, it's not a crucial executive decision, although it's important for the council to how it goes forward and how it manages things. So um, you have a personal and a prejudicial interest, as you've said, and therefore it would not, my advice to you, it would probably not look correct to vote for it, but as um, Councillor Vickers has already said it's entirely your decision on what you do. Well, thank, thank you for that, uh, Nigel, the Chief Executive. I think that's good advice. And I'll, I'll stay and I won't pay any part of the vote. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure the vote's going to be a significant vote anyhow. But okay, fine. Good. Having said all of that, now we move on to the uh, that particular pa paper, Agenda Item 6, Securing Effective Management of the Kennet and Avon Canal. Paul, is that you? you just petitions just to say we haven't had any petitions that's we skipped item five. Oh, i'm sorry i skipped <laughs> item five we don't have any petitions do we no, no petition no chairman right go ahead thank you chairman Paul. evening all um so this is my report on the kennet and even canal you'll i mean there's necessarily quite a lot of background um to this uh, report because as soon as you begin to consider the um the issues, uh, you need to understand some of the background and it's complex because there are very many users of the canal. There's a lot of stakeholders and there's a, a, as a consequence, there's a lot of issues around the um, the use of the canal and particularly the towpath. Uh, I just probably worth pointing out that my, the main focus of this report is about the use of the towpath, I would suggest. The local authority, well, West Berkshire doesn't have an awful lot of interest in the um, the management of the navigation of the um, of, of, of the canal. Um, Jim, I, I guess you just you, you want me just to kind of run through some of the kind of um, I, the, the, the basic background to, to the report. Yeah, okay. Yes, um, so I uh, the, the background covers uh, the history of uh, the canal and its use in West Berkshire. Uh, some of the issues around the um, the use of the canal uh, in relation to the, the towpath, but also, in a, in a sense, the um, the waterway as well. Uh, conflict exists between the various users, boaters, canoeists, walkers, cyclists, anglers, um, you name it. Um, I then uh, give some detail on all of the, um, the, the stakeholders, and the key st stakeholders here really are the um, uh, Canal and Rivers Trust and in, uh, in along its full length, of course, the riparian local authorities of which West Berkshire Council is one of them. Um, the, I, the, 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 I then go on to talk about, um, to, to give some proposals for the, um, what I believe to be the key issues around the, um, the, the um, management of the canal. And um, I can I can I, mean, I can talk through some of those if if, if need be, um, but essentially the um, the key issue for me is um, 
there, there seems to be an absence or there's likely to be an absence once the uh, the Kennet and Avon Canal partnership um, comes to an end and it's due to come to an end next year because the um, the funding mechanism which was agreed way back in the day, 20 years ago, um, which I, I means that the local authorities pay a contribution um, for about £25,000 in West Berkshire Council's case comes to an end next year. So the funding stops and effectively the um, effectively the, um, the partnership um, stops as well, although it hasn't, the Kennet and Even Canal partnership actually hasn't met for some time. Uh, so there's so there's some um, discussion to be had, I think, around around that uh, and what model uh, we use going forward for the the future management of the of the canal towpath. I think uh, most um, particularly um, in order to bring about the best income uh, outcomes for our communities and the users, um, we have and will have ongoing funding because the canal is a public right of way, and we have. 106. Um, I previously had 106 funding, and we've got capital funding. Uh, but really, um, my concern is that that in the absence of um, the knowledge of what the other local authorities are doing, then we may be missing out on match funding, contributory funding, etc., from other um, sources. And certainly, we're in danger of operating in isolation, um, which is a danger in the sense that. Um, the canal is a linear um, I, I right of way and a corridor um, which runs from the Thames to um, through to Bristol and beyond. Uh, that's really the, the the bones of my report, and I'm happy to take any questions, Chairman. Okay, thanks. I've got uh, Councillor Vickers and Councillor James Cole. Tell me. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good report, but the one thing um, that I didn't see and I think needs to be taken account of is the fact that the canal, especially as it goes through Newbury, is a potential source of flooding and the whole, you know, is important to the water management. And because it's at some stages a canalised river, and at other stages, it's an engineered canal. There is a bit, and, and you do identify this, Paul, that there is lack of clarity as to who's responsible for what aspects. But the men, there is no mention of flooding, and particularly in central Newbury, from where it passes uh, through um, uh, Newbury Lock uh, to where it, it, it has the flute sluice at the bottom end of Victoria Park, which had this very sad fatal injury. It is the only way of carrying water down the Kennet Valley. And it is above the surrounding land by a significant amount. So it is absolutely vital important from a flood point of view, and that is our council's responsibility uh, as the lead local flood authority to coordinate the actions necessary to prevent flooding. So I think that needs to be considered. But yes, um, from my brief in the, as the council's rep on the local access forum, it's it's recreational value, particularly to walkers and cyclists and these sorts of people. And, and you've highlighted the issues, which you, <laughs> we know only too well from not too far from where I live. Um, so, I, I mean, in terms of what needs, I absolutely agree. We need to resurrect a partnership in more or less the same form. But as I understand it, the partnership is formed in order to manage the funding of a very substantial capital amount, external grant funding, and that's now long over. But, you know, the thought of the canal as a whole being short of, I think, £150,000, of which 25000 we contribute, is a concern. And we do need to do everything we can. I'm not saying it has to come from our own taxpayers, but to work together with other authorities to ensure that that funding for essential maintenance is enabled as best as possible. Otherwise, you know, if it's not maintained, it could flood the centre of Newbury and probably other important places up and down the district. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I think we'll come back to the, the funding side uh, when, when we've gone through the questions. Uh, uh, James, Councillor Cole. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I got my daughter as well coming up. Sorry? I was speaking to John Wynne Stanley. Sorry. I asked my daughter what questions I should ask. She also lives on a canal, albeit not the Kennet and Avon. Um, 
And she immediately came up with the, the issue of towpaths. She described as cyclists going too fast and close to walkers versus walkers with dogs not on leads and with headphones on listening to music and oblivious to cyclists. Seemed to be a quite neat description of a towpath problem. Um, I did wonder about your statement, Paul, um, our interest being only the towpath. And Tony has brought up the issue of flooding. Also, this is a question. Do we have residents registered living on the canal? Because if we do, we have to represent them. Is that one of them over there by any chance? Mm -hmm. So we have another interest. Um, so I think it's a bit more than just the towpath. Uh, I asked my daughter what other things that we might be interested in, and she immediately started commenting on breakages uh, in the locks and so on. So we have a rather wider interest, I think. Uh, and we certainly have an interest in ensuring the ongoing management of it. Thank you. Uh, John Wynne Stanley, John, Service Director, you want to say something? Yeah, so it was just to clarify uh, on, on Councillor Vickers' point, um, the Environment Agency are actually the flood authority for the uh, main river, the Kennet Naven, uh, you know, the, the, the Kennet Naven and, the, and the River Kennet. Um, and just to just to, so that we don't forget that there was a significant amount of money spent on flood defences through Newbury back in 2015-16. Uh, I think roughly in the uh, sort of vicinity of about four million pounds worth was spent on flood defences. So, and a lot of that was designated under the uh, Flood and Water Management Act. So, um, with the Environment Agency and various other uh, riparian owners' responsibility to keep those maintained. So, it was just to clarify that point, really. Thank you, John. Uh, Councillor Rolls, Claire. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, can I thank um, uh, uh, the officer for, I think, a really, really helpful report, particularly all the background information. I think it's really well written and very good. I just want to ask um, the point about sustainable transport that's mentioned um, and, and whether he could just elaborate on that a little bit in terms of um, what what kind of transport he was alluding to. I mean, he talks about the government, um, helping the government achieve the net zero carbon targets. And I just wondered how that, what that actually sort of looks like, but also how that sits with um, you know, other groups within the council and if that's actually being considered as, as potential transport in the, in the way that I consider it, if you see what I mean. Um, also, I would like to uh, agree that I think it's a little bit narrow in terms of just focusing on the towpaths, which seems to be uh, the, the, the focal point of the report. Um, I think what is very clear is the uh, the mental health and well-being um, benefits, which are obviously throughout most of the points made in the report. And I think that is really, really key and important. And it goes down to just even people feeding ducks, you know, on the canal, um, which post COVID I think has helped people through it. So I think that whole point needs to maybe just drawn out a little bit more, not necessarily smattered through the individual headings. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, oh my God, James, is that an old hand? No, it's new hand. <laughs> okay. Look, well, just before you, I go. I, just I think Councillor Abs just before. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm about to do that. Uh, I just want to check if it was a new hand or not. Uh, Adrian, Councillor Abs. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just come back to the the one point this was mentioned very recently about um, this report is the management of the Kellen Avon Canal and. Well, there is an issue with um, who's using it, how they use it, um, the way it's used, etc. Uh, I have to say, in twenty odd years of of using the the canal path to sometimes commute to work on my bike or just walk on a weekend, walk the dog, and so on and so forth. And before she's passed away, um, I, I, I I've never seen any management. I've never seen anybody enforcing any of the of the rules so my question is is if if we're talking about management of the country, do we have anybody that actually other than the people that give the licenses out for the canals themselves do we have anybody take any act active control of 
you know, the, the interaction between pedestrian, cyclists, dog walkers and so on? Or is it just left for the for them to read the notices? Good question. Paul, do you want to try and hand answer that? Yeah. Could, um, would you like me to take the, the, the other questions as well and, and turn? Yeah, please Jim, go yeah. ahead. So, so um, with regards to the, um, the focus of, of the report, I, I probably have um, missed like, um, the, the, the committee slightly in terms of the, um, the focus. Uh, I was thinking more about the, the funding which West Berkshire Council makes. It's largely towards maintenance of the towpath, but of course, absolutely. Um, the, 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 the canal has a, a, has a, a greater um, a, a importance in terms of health and wellbeing, cycling. Um, and it does provide accommodation, of course it does for, for, for some residents and, and there's a very active community down at West Mills, for example. So I do recognise that, but perhaps, yeah, I mean, it's, it's noted right, that maybe needs to be put to, to be drawn out, out further. Um, I, the second question I think was from Claire on sustainable transport. Well, I'm not a, a, the, the sustainable um, transport um, expert, but um, certainly what the, um, the canal um, offers is it does offer a, an easy off-road route um, from um, I, the two main towns into um, the centre of Newbury and beyond um, and going the other way into Thatcher. Um, some people make longer commuting trips from, from Theo and so on. I haven't got figures around that, but certainly I know that, you know, anecdotally, and anecdotally, I know there's a lot of people who use it for that purpose. Um, it does, um, and, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a safe off-road walking route as well, uh, in that sense. Um, uh, in terms of helping um, to reduce um, our or the carbon footprint of the the, the, the population, um, I, you know, I, we could. I think there'd be, there's some further work would need to be done to 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 establish just how many people actually do use the canal on a regular basis who would otherwise have to take a car to make the journey. Um, and I the um, the other the third point was um, Councillor Abs. Sorry, um, I Councillor Abs, I've forgotten your 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 question, which was the third one. It was one. basically who's in charge of day to day management of the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, um, I, 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 in terms of enforcement, that that was that that was the point, wasn't it? Yes, um, my apologies. So that's in terms of enforcement. Um, I, I would probably have to look to the, the Canal and Rivers Trust colleagues on that, and I, but I know they have been doing some work. I, I, I've, I've heard that they are, and, 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 and I'm aware of um, a code of conduct which um, is is um, uh, is is in drafting stage, or perhaps some that they would clarify that. But certainly, it's something which is I've read is 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 in the offing. Um, and I suppose, like anything else, um, uh, enforcement's more about trying to, to um, you know, encourage people to 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 behave in ways which which um, are more um, I, I conducive to um, multiple use of a of a, of a towpath. But that's that's not always the most effective way of dealing with that. So I would probably refer that um, question to the to, yeah. to colleagues from the Canal and Rivers Trust. If I, 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 I was going to I was going to come to them once we gone through all the questions. Uh, I, I know this, Mark. You've got your hand up here, so uh, uh, I, I, I will wait. I will wait patiently. It's just so that I that, that I have the answers to some of the questions, but I, I will wait. Okay, fine. Uh, can I just go back to James Cole. James, you got a further question? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I was wondering, uh, again, in view of another comment made to me that the Crown River Trust has a habit in some areas of cutting back vegetation that what's described as inappropriate times. West Barks is doing much less cutting back of vegetation on roadsides, for example. Uh, seemed to have been some success in that uh, effort last summer. Is the scope here to make something of our canal side habitats, uh, perhaps as part of a joint effort, uh, put that one to you, Paul. Okay. Well, let, let me let me leave that for just a second. Uh, uh, Claire, you've got your hand up. Is that yeah? Hello? Yeah. Just a quick question, Chairman. It's more sort of an internal question. Um, I, I wondered who was our the local authority representative mm. um, on the this as an outside body, um, and also what that role should be, or what that role should be moving forward, working with the um working with the the canals I, d I don't know i just wondered if we knew who it was and what they do that's a good question do we know tony 
Well, and quite recently, it was former councillor Tony Ferguson, who was very much hands-on in, in the early years. I, you know, it may be one of these outside bodies where it doesn't have to be a councillor that represents the council, but I don't know, to be sure. That, just, let, let, let me ask Paul. Paul, do you know who? It was Tony Ferguson at one stage. But he, but he hasn't been around since I've been It used to be my father. Uh, yes, that, that's right. And, and clear your absent. That's right. You, so, your so, father was so involved. Paul, what you're there. saying is this council, this council does not have a representation. It's not the only council that doesn't have a representation no, on, on, the, on, the, on the partnership. And I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a necessarily a requirement for for, for us to send mm. a, 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 a representative. But I know that um, I that um, in Wiltshire, for example, they 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 they're, they're um, a portfolio member actually used to attend the the. Um, uh, the, the meetings on a regular basis, okay. Fleur, Derry, Felice. Okay, let, let, let me, I'm going to go to, uh, to Mark and Mark, but let me just give you a, all the other people have had their, their members either chance. I thought this paper was excellent because I learned a lot from it. There's a lot of it. Uh, it's kind of one of those things that, you know, it doesn't come to the forefront all the time. It came and I, I learned a little bit of history of what it is. But the thing that jumped out of me was great definition of problems. Well, I didn't see any degree of, you know, what are we going to do for a solution? Uh, yeah, and and uh, maybe that's a good time to pass over to Mark Evans. To uh, you, you, Mark, you said you had the answers to some of the questions, but I'd like the answer to that one as well, please. What, what's what's your proposed solution long term? Can I, can I leave that one to last? Is that all right? So yes, I just fine. can I just run through? I just I, I'm just going to recap. I hope you can hear me okay, everybody. No, you're fine. Uh, the, the flooding issue, um, John, John Wynne Stanley's answer, the flooding issue, just, but, but just to say, you know, we, 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 we do a lot of water control uh, and, and I will just go back, Rob, Rob, my colleague's nodding his head. If you need any information on, on water control and flooding, uh, Paul, we can give you quite a lot of information on that. Uh, so that was the answer to that. Uh, the towpath use, speeding cyclists, uh, yes. We have terrible problems with speeding cyclists on the canal. We do run campaigns along the canal, uh, along the Kennet and even along all our canals, which is to reduce the speed of cyclists. Um, uh, share the space, drop your pace. Uh, those are the type of strap lines that we have. And we'll often run those campaigns and say to cyclists, you know, please, please uh, consider all those that are using the towpaths. They're not very wide in certain places. Uh, yes, we do have people living on the canal. I think that was a question. I think that was actually answered. Uh, many of our boaters actually live on their boats. Uh, they might not necessarily stay in one place. We have continuous cruisers. They would move around. So they might be uh, in West Berkshire, but they might move up and down the whole of the network. Um, we had a question about breakages in locks. I'm, I, I wasn't sure if that was the locks breaking. Our lock gates have a, a life expectancy of about 20 years and they are replaced. They are at considerable cost to us. Um, the Kennet and Avon is a very heavily used canal for boaters. So many of our lock gates are in, a, in the process of being replaced and we are looking at sustainable lock gates at the moment. Um, I did want to thank Councillor Vickers. Um, he made some really um, positive remarks for us. So thank you to that. And just to say the partnership that we were alluding to at the beginning. That was part, I think you said, from the Heritage Lottery, the largest Heritage Lottery, 20 something, I think 25, more than 25 years ago now. And the match funding we talked about, the 25,000 pound, has been a contribution in match for that. And as you talk, well, I think that's why we're here because that runs out next year, but that has been excellent. We did used to meet, uh, I think it fell apart during COVID actually, Paul. Paul used to represent West Berkshire. I used to represent the Canal and River Trust. Um, and the other local authorities. It was a very good way to meet up and talk about some of the issues and the funding. And we've done a report. We do a report every year. Paul, you should have had that report from us, which outlines uh, everything that we've been doing. Um, the mental health, the canal, yes, we're very aware of that. Um, health and well-being is really key to us, certainly in COVID. Um, our strap line is actually life is better by water and the amount of people that were walking on the canals during COVID increased significantly. Um, use of the towpaths, enforcing the rules. We do have bylaws. Uh, most of the rules and most of our um, enforcement is around boats and not necessarily on the towpath. We find it very, very difficult to police the towpath, but we do have bylaws that we can 
uh, refer to. Um, and vegetation cutting back, um, perhaps that's one for Rob. Maybe he'll jump in on the vegetation. Um, I'm a bit concerned if we're cutting back vegetation at the wrong time. We have an environment team who are very strict about we cut where we when we cut back our vegetation on all our canals and to what level we cut them back as well so we're obviously very aware of bird nesting and everything and then chair uh, what, what what was your question i said i would leave it to last and now typically i forgot what the question was <laughs> well, that's typical i should have answered it first well, I, did, I did observe that uh, this was an interesting report that defined the problem but i didn't see any hint of a direction of any of the solutions in other words, where's the where's the where's the money coming coming from in uh, post twenty twenty three? How much do you really need? Uh, and uh, who's going to be who's leading the charge to put together a new partnership? Well, we're very happy to lead that charge. I mean, the money that we have, the money we've received from West Berkshire has been has been excellent. But I, it's 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 about the partnership. I think the partnership is key here. The money is brilliant. We spend approximately £2 million on the canal in West Berkshire per year. So as a percentage, the 25000 is a small amount. But Rob may jump in and tell you that actually pays for something like emptying dog bins or you know something absolutely key that we do that actually if we lost would be um, probably have a big impact on our users. But really the partnership and the coming together and having the interaction that we have with with West Berkshire for me is really crucial to talk through some of the ideas. We've talked about some funding coming from elsewhere. We've looked at, we've had section 106 money. We've had the work around Newbury. And actually someone mentioned earlier about the, the drowning of the young boy um, at Newbury some time ago now, but I, I was brought in to work with John on the water safety partnership. And um, I hope he thinks that that was worthwhile. And we've continued to sit on that. And actually we, Rob has just installed some safety cabinets down at Newbury and that was as a, a result of us working with the council and other um, uh, organisations. So the, the money, it would be a shame to lose that match funding that we use for, for, for the canal, um, but it's also about the partnership and continuing the partnership. So can I just summarise that and say is, uh, whilst money is always important, you're saying it's not as important as just getting together and, and working together. I was, I, I was, I was saying that, that I think that <laughs> I'm not going to turn down any money. The money would be fantastic if it comes along, but I think strengthening the partnership for me would be crucial moving forward, making, making decisions on what we, what we as Canal and River Trust are doing in West, West Berkshire on the Kennet and yeah, Avon I've got, Canal. I've got a couple of members here wanting to ask, but can I just push back on this? So how do we do that? Well, I think we've got the basis of it from, from, from the, the meetings that we were having that Paul was attending from the local authority. And I'm not to say that necessarily, Paul, I don't mean to be rude, whether you're the right person, but it was great when you were on it. But it was having that link into the local authority. So many of the things that we do, we need to link into the local authority. When we're working on Section 106, we linked into the, into the countryside department. We might need to speak to engineers. You know, if, they're, if they're, they're, there's often finances that we need to talk about. So uh, having that link for me to have a contact with a local authority to make sure we can talk to the right department is actually quite crucial. Okay. Councillor Abs, you go for next, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, pretty much that, oh, I don't know what the feedback was there, but um, anyway, they, uh, that, that's, that's the thing I wrote down, really. It seems to me if that meeting has stopped, it really needs to resume. And if we're going to watch this, then we, uh, as a member, I'd like us to, as strongly as we can, say, please resume those meetings, because if it's going to be need, more money needed going forward, then we need to know as soon as possible to plan budget-wise and so on. It sounds to me as if maybe we should also have a member allocated again. <laughs> maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, the other Tony, thing um, oh. I was going to say, sorry, Chairman, was that um, it's, it, it is quite difficult to police, so, uh, in, in, uh, but uh, the reality is that the, the offensives are generally caused at certain times a day, commute times or lunchtime exercise times or the weekend. So it's not like you need to monitor this thing 24-7. And of course, there are CCTVs and all sorts of things that could be installed. So happy to help a little bit here, but you know, we, we could at least monitor the problem and find out how extensive it is rather than anecdotally say, this is the problem or that's the problem, Indeed. just to get some data, really. Indeed. Tony. 
Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, I, I can't say too strongly that, that the Canal and River Trust is the key to it, and I should have declared the interest that I'm a member, and it was really a welcome change to take it out of direct government control and make it a charity, not only because it was able to leverage in uh, external funding, but it, you, you get a different culture. And it took a few years, from, from what I've been aware, to, to change from the you know, um, civil service culture to the volunteer-led kind of culture. But I think it's happening. I think there's enormous potential. When you look at the figures, para 522, tourism and leisure, 25 to 30 million pounds a year is what the canal is worth to us in, in, in tourism. Um, and it is, it's, it's so well used because there are a few, few other canals which are relatively easy to use, apart from the Cayenne locks, you know, it's not difficult to navigate up and down the canal. And um, certainly as far as Newbury's concerned, we, we see as a town council this as being the jewel in the crown of the town. It's the unique selling point. And I think a potential partner on the partnership would be the bid. I mean, they're essentially the focus for the tourism industry in the whole district now. Yeah. So, you know, where we've moved away from capital funding on restoration and major repairs and into a sort of keep the thing going mode, I think we need to be looking more and more to the economic value of keeping it the way it is. And I think that the, the partnership should be reconvened, maybe should review its terms of reference, um, reach out and seek additional active partners. And yes, we need to have a member on the partnership. Yeah, got that. So I, I, it's a really good report. One little question. Um, I don't want to upset the angling community, but I learned something, you know, if the numbers of people angling is reducing significantly, I have to say that the anglers are the people that cut back the vegetation and start the process, which Paul describes in his report, which ends up with serious bank erosion and potential danger. It's it's mainly the anglers and then the dog walkers who let their dogs swim, and that's a another issue. But you know, so what do the the question I would put to um, Canal and River Trust is what do they see as as the future of angling in terms of a revenue stream? Is it significant or is it something that we really shouldn't treat like, you know, it, it's untouchable as an as an interest group. Well, everybody's got their own interests and they often clash. You know? Cyclists and anglers do not go together on the towpath. Uh, Okay, uh, Councillor, Councillor Rolls and then... Yeah, uh, th thank you, Chair. Again. I'm not going to labour this point, but it's just in terms of timing. If we were going to um, strongly recommend that we do have a member as a point of contact, yeah. um, then I'm just conscious that May is looming and the appointment to outside bodies and committees, it would seem to me quite timely if we did that um, to catch it this year rather than halfway through the year or next year. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Paul, do you want to... To summarise, close up. Well, uh, Jim, yeah, I, I, I just I to pick up on uh, Mark's uh, Mark's point um, about the the the, the partnership. The, the one body who's 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 not here, I don't think, is the um, uh, Kennet and Avon Canal Trust. And it was, I think, it was the trust who were largely the the catalyst for bringing the um, the local authorities together um, uh, with this, because I think. They got the money. But initially, it was the trust who got the, the got the, got the funding. I may I may be wrong, but, but certainly they were they, they were certainly the um the body that brought everybody together. And we should be. I think we should need to reach out if we're if we're, if we're going to set this body up again. Then we need to 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 to. to, you, to we reach certainly out to do. I, I I just you know what we don't want is people finger pointing fingers and saying, "Oh, if that was your job, well, no, that was I thought that was your job." You know, let's let's grab hold of this poll and make it happen. Uh, before we close down, I'm conscious that we have the cyclists here and they use the towpath. And I've been told there's a, a path for everyone's strategy. So where does the towpath fit into that? Claire, do you like to comment on? Yes. Um, uh, how, how long is it going to be? Um, Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I wasn't aware of that. I was not made aware that you had that, and I'm trying to manage time. Uh, you, you're also on part of the next one, aren't you? The, 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 are you on part of the leisure strategy as well? Hmm? No, I got, I got that confused then. Okay. Um, well, is, is it, well, can, you, can you give us a quick summary of what you were going to present? Um, yes, it's good. If I could still share the presentation, I would... Yeah. Chairman, I can't hear. No, your mic's not. I see it's on, but it doesn't seem to. Could you speak up now? Maybe the connection. Yeah. 
Chairman, ironically, we've got the cycle for a meeting concurrently, or I think it met slightly earlier today. <laughs> I couldn't be in both places and I gave priority to this. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yeah, yes, that's fine. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Um, yes, I mean, um, Sustrans is the charity who um, make it easier for people to walk, cycle and wheel. And we're doing a number of projects down the Canada Navan Canal at the moment. Um, and what we're really, really keen to do is to work. We are working in partnership with CRT at the moment, but we're really uh, keen to work in partnership with West Berkshire Council as well, because obviously if we're working in partnership, we're going to be much more effective at actually delivering our projects. So we have actually contacted Richard Sumner um, as portfolio holder for transport planning and countryside and actually asked him to meet us on site so that he's got a really clear understanding of the projects, what we're trying to do with the Paths for Everyone strategy and therefore to work um, together with us to make it happen. Um, so basically, if it is okay for me, um, sorry, just to sort of, I won't give the whole the presentation as such, but just... Um, Sorry to say um, that in 2018, um, Sustrans developed the Paths for Everyone strategy, which basically um, uh, set out its vision for the National Cycle Network. And obviously, Sustrans, Sustrans is the custodian for that network. And basically, we want to work in partnership um, with all the local authorities, um, and other partners like CRT, British Horse Society and so on to help us run the National Cycle Network, which is about uh, 13,000 miles long now and it covers the whole of Britain. We want to work in, um, to fix it. So we've got a 20 year plan now of projects all set out to actually fix the National Cycle Network and the Kennedy Nathan Canal. Um, as I say, we've got several projects uh, in that corridor uh, to actually help us fix the um, national cycle network and we want to grow it we want to help help get people to help us love it and obviously we're getting funding from a number of sources to help us do that at the moment on the right hand side of the screen there um, we've got a number of recommendations which help us to actually um, deliver against our strategy um, i won't go through them all because obviously that would take me time but it's about making it accessible for all so following the government guidance um, which is LT and 120 which is making sure that the path is wide enough obviously there's exceptions where uh, there might be things that are stopping that but generally uh, we try and make the paths three meters wide so that it means that shared access is a lot easier obviously on the canal uh, um, footpath there might be need to be exceptions to that but we try to have a hard surface as well so the puddling and the mud that you might be having um, as issues at the moment uh, are no longer an, as an issue also along the Kennedy Nathan Canal I know there's a number of barriers and we've been talking to CRT about that because barriers prevent the National Cycle Network being um, accessible for all. And we'd like to work with the local community to help us to actually design, develop and maintain the network as well. But this past everyone's strategy is on our website and people are very welcome to have a look at it in more detail. But just to let you know that by uh, in 2017, 67% of the network was on road, 32% of it was um, traffic free. By 2040, we want to have 66% of the National Cycle Network traffic free with only, and 34% of it quiet way, which means we want to have none of the National Cycle Network on road at all. And then that will mean that we'll have a lot more users actually using the National Cycle Network. And remember, we're for not just cyclists, but for walkers and for people who are wheeling in different contexts as well. We actually created a, a th three year review of the Paths for Everyone report. And that shows us how um, SUS trans have improved the network in terms of access, safety. Could, and Can I just health. try to bring you narrow focus in a little bit, yeah. uh, as opposed to the general cycling throughout the country, uh, talk about cycling on 
the Kenneth and Avon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, this... so do you know? Yeah. I'm I'm just getting a sense that there isn't a single point of contact. Uh, do you know who to go to? So when you want to do a fix fix part of the towpath that's overgrown or, or or whatever the issue is, when you want to address that, who do you who do you go to? Oh uh, yeah, so I'm I'm the network development manager, so I'm the person that would be in contact with whoever it is on the ground. Most of the time, I deal directly with CRT. So the only sort of contact I have on a regular basis with West Berkshire is with Clive Toombs, who's been in conversation with us about schemes up and down West Berkshire, not just on the canal path, yeah. but that's who I would go to immediately. But um, okay. he's one of your engineers, okay. but okay. Uh, not necessarily always related to the canal. Well, thank, thank you for that. No uh, uh, Paul, I'd like to bring this to a close. Anything you want to say? Or do I, I just want to summarise towards the end. Um, just that there's, that there's clearly other interests with it around the table, we've, and we've heard from some tonight who probably need to be involved at least. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in coming yeah. together as part of this partnership, yeah. even if it's only in the initial stages, to get some discussions um, up and running. So well, I, would, I would suggest that we bring up all the interested parties around the table. Yes. For that. Yeah, that that is key. Uh, just before we go on, uh, there was a request that uh, the sustenance presentation be sent to everybody. So if you could arrange for that Gordon and I think you said you could all, it's on your website anyhow yeah yes so just the, the, the projects the, the link on that, that, that would be thank you thank you very much yeah just to close this it, it's it's quite clear that uh, this needs a little bit of focus and strategic direction and uh, uh, it's quite clear to me that I think to everyone else we need to get this partnership going again so I, I Paul I think your good self and CRT getting together and trying to make that happen and draw in some of our other uh, partners uh, either local authorities or sustrans can get them all together. Um, it's very clear as well, I, I think, and I hope we should, uh, I think as a recommendation from OSMC, if we all agree, I'm getting a consensus, we should uh, we should go to the leader of council and suggest that there's a new, uh, a, a new position of a representative from the local authority onto the, onto the canal. Uh, I'm not sure what, under what board. Yeah, and I think is. it should be a member. I mean, obviously, officers support it, but, yeah. you know, it gives it, it more clarity. Yeah. Uh, and, and also, I, 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 I totally agree with, with Tony, to Councillor Vickers, that uh, this is something I think the bid should be interested in. So, again, Paul, if you want to note that and, and pull the bid in. So, I, I, think, uh, I think there's a lot to do. It's been a very interesting discussion. Uh, it's opened my eyes to one or two things, and I think a few other people as well. Uh, okay, well, thank you very much indeed. And then we'll move on to the uh, the next item, which is item seven, scrutiny of the draft West Berkshire leisure strategy. Councillor Linden. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I wish to thank Gordon Oliver for his hard work and assistance in on the West Berkshire leisure strategy as well as the assistance I've received from Councillor Masters and ex-Councillor Tim Metcalf. Councillor Eric Patterson, a uh, member of the task group, rang me this morning to say he couldn't attend, which I knew, because of a temporary physical injury, and he's improving. And also he's got COVID today. The key to our report is the delivery of the strategy and the way forward for OSMC. And I've just got uh, some points, and then I'll go on to uh, the Lido. So on page 86 and 87 of our agenda, I just want to include a few bits on there, so I'll read it from there. The proposals include all future consultations to capture the home postcodes or town and village of respondents to facilitate identification and mitigation of any geographical gaps in the response. Ensure that future communication strategies involve two-way dialogue with existing and potential users rather than one-way communication. Consider whether additional research is required to address the perceived lack of leisure facilities, particularly a swimming pool in the east of the district, and how best to respond to the barriers facing local residents. To explore options for reinstating community outreach programs and making more effective use of village community halls for leisure activities in more remote communities. 
Although the task group did not uncover any major shortcomings in the strategy or supporting public engagements, the above proposals highlight a number of areas where improvements could be made. The Lido project is an excellent project that will bring users outside the district council area for greater use throughout at least half the year. The likelihood it, it, it will turn a profit. The project will deal with the water table problem. I feel the input of the executive member, Coward House Sir Williston, with his extensive previous property experience will be a great advantage to the project. Happy for Gordon and Councillor Williston to add further information, Chairman. Thank you very much, Tony. And let me uh, let me add my thanks to you uh, for uh, what, what was it, about six weeks ago or so, stepping into the breach, uh, taking over the chair of this task group that was uh, was was candidly for various reasons floundering, uh, and for you and Gordon in particular to pull this all together. Really appreciate it. And thank you very much. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, no, 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 not a problem. Um, Councillor Wollaston, do you have anything you'd want to add before we start taking questions and go to debate? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, firstly, to give congratulations to Paul Martin and his team. Um, Paul, as you know, is an interim consultant and really has come in and pulled this whole project together. Um, I think we've produced a very good ledger uh, strategy looking over the next 10 years. And that clearly ties into the playing pitch strategy, which is renewed every, effectively every three years in conjunction with Sport England. Um, I think the, the, the LIDO is going to be a, a, a fantastic um, solution for, for, for Newbury and West Berkshire as a whole. And I will, would just confirm that my, I also share views that we need to look more closely at the east uh, and look at the possibility of a new ledger centre there over the medium long term. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Howard. Uh, Paul Martindale, yeah? uh, you're online, yeah? Paul, anything to add before I go to questions? No, not at this stage. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, well, the first one I hand up is Councillor Abbs. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed reading the report, actually. Um, and, you know, the concept of owning an improved Lido, well, Lido, whatever way we say it, um, is, is, I think everybody would support that. So which option we eventually go for will be debated later, I'm sure. The only concern I, I came across really was um, when I looked at the consultation, the breadth of the consultation, and I think it's marked down as being um some concern but 505 usable responses out of a population of 160,000 worries me it, it's very it's very low in, and to, uh, I, I think the strategy will probably end up being right but it, it's not based on a lot of evidence or a lot of feedback from the public so that then and then I went on to look in there and I was looking at the list I think it's nine organizations that are mentioned here um, that were some workshops were done. Um, but again, I don't see any detail about how many people attended the workshops. So again, I don't know whether that was one individual. So in other words, is it 505 plus nine people? Or was it how extensive? It would have been really good to build some confidence that the, this consultation had, had really gone as wide as possible. But I think I understand looking through the report and all its delays as to why we are where we are, but uh, we are where we are. Um, I did notice that you know the, this this key weakness on the online survey, and I, you know, in this day and age, I'm really surprised we're not able to run um, an interactive online survey. Um, okay. It's just it's a very basic. Note thing the to questions. Do. We'll get to, yeah, we'll, so, we'll get to either Paul or uh, yeah, or hard to combine. But, but but overall, you know, the direction it's going, I, I don't really have much more to say than a little bit concerned because of the lack of data again uh, okay. as to making decisions without the right data. Okay. Uh, Councillor Vickers, Tony. Thank you, Chairman. Well, it is certainly an improvement over the, the draft um, that we saw earlier, which um, resulted in, in, in the leisure strategy not being um, you know, uh, endorsed by the executive and referred to us. So well done, everybody involved in the, the leisure strategy. And I understand there were problems because of COVID and membership and getting together. But yeah, I, I, I uh, and I wouldn't want executive to not formally adopt it. But um, I do have some concerns outstanding. In addition to the ones that, um, well, there's so much concerns as, as questions which I think aren't answered, or, 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 or 
sections of the report which pose questions for which there seems to be a need for an answer. For example, um, we talk about the problems with rural areas not having perhaps um, as good access as they'd want, and yet it's surprising to see that access to transport was not one of the issues that people seem to have raised in the consultation. I would have thought access for tra to transport, particularly for young people, to get to their leisure activity was an issue. And at the other end of the spectrum, we're, we're, we're reaching a stage where, you know, increasingly aging population, that might be the reason, mightn't it not, when uh, most of the leisure centres are based in schools and can't be used by the public during school hours. And a lot of elderly people don't like going out in the evenings we need to look at some way of allowing the public to access our leisure centres, even if they're in schools uh, at certain times, maybe more over the weekends than they can. I mean, I'm lucky in Newbury, we have Northcroft, which is not linked with a school. Um, the other point I have is that, and it was my attention was drawn to the fact that there was a remark that um, the, uh, the centre at Pangbourne is no longer managed by the council and therefore we haven't got statistics on its use and it made me think well there must be loads of private organizations running very valuable leisure centers for our residents shouldn't we oh, where are we feeding in the data on the use of privately owned and run you know maybe fee paying centers um, because it's part of what we're doing to meet the leisure requirement whether it's publicly funded or not so um, those are questions. So I, I do doubt the, 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 the usefulness of the statistics that we've got, but they're better than what, what he had. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cole, James. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Vickers is sort of touching on the question of the breadth of this, whether this is looking widely enough. Uh, and I guess I'm looking at a similar thing from slightly different angle. Um, older people are not necessarily going to be into organized sports. Most of this report is about organized sports. Uh, no criticism at all of Councillor Linden, who came in at the last moment and has done a wonderful job to finish this off. Um, but it is questionable as to whether or not this should look wider, or at least our strategy should be wider, should take in things like walking. Mm. After all, we've been talking about the canal towpath. Uh, we have an interest in our ward. Claire Rolls in particular has an interest in a new walking route. Uh, it doesn't actually get covered by this, and yet it is part of leisure strategy, to my mind. Yeah. Um, I'll put this question to Councillor Linden deliberately rather than Councillor Wollaston. Councillor Wollaston will understand why in a moment. Um, does Councillor Linden think that things like, we well, might term brain activity rather than physical activity, in other words, uh, culture and heritage and history and that sort of stuff, leisure to some people, should that be kept separate? I, I put it to Councillor Linden rather than Councillor Wollaston because we know perfectly well that we have a separate strategy. Should it be separate? Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Let me just make a note of that. Councillor Marino. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, also, just want to echo congratulations to everyone involved in the strategy. Um, it's a good report, I think. Um, and as one of the most Eastern members, I'm, deli I'm particularly delighted to hear about, obviously, an emphasis in leisure in the East. It would be nice to have to, to, not have to travel into Reading every time I want to go for a swim. Um, and the, the only real question I've got is, I was made aware sort of around like August, September time last year of the difficulties that there have been in, in terms of like logistically trying to get meetings together. Um, and obviously very happy that Council Linden stepped in, you know, in January to... To chair this to get things going however i just, want, just wondered obviously given the fact that it had been known for a while the difficulties that were going on why did it take until january this year to get a different chairman in holding this back so to speak okay councillor masters 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, it's not so much questions, but just to clarify a couple of points about the transport um, issue that people have raised, um, and, you know, and specifically um, Councillor Cole. Um, um, on the walking aspect, during the sessions that um, certainly when um, Councillor Linden was chairing, we um, there was a lot of talk about access from rural areas and how um, it was important that people were able to travel by sustainable means. Um, and I think on a couple of points, it does talk about specifically active travel. So I think that we, you know, we, we, it, 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 there were certain time restraints, um, obviously, to get this through. So we might not have got the depth that we uh, would have liked if we'd have been able to get this going um, under the suitable chairman um, beforehand. But I, you know, we had concerns, and I thank Councillor Marino for his reference to the to the east of the region, um, and that was something that I'm specifically spoke up about the fact that the focus and location of things are very much along the A4 corridor and fairly close to that. Um, and so the, the rural areas in the east and the west are something that we, we were very concerned about. So um, I would like to commend Councillor Linden for his chair chairmanship and stewardship of the, uh, the process since January. Thank you, Councillor Masters. Councillor Rolls, Claire. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'd like to um, congratulate uh, Councillor Linden and also Councillor Williston um, for, I think, a really, um, a really good job. Um, I just also wanted to make a comment. Um, in terms of the uh, organisations where we have done workshops, I was very pleased to see that we have engaged with um, charities who support disabled people. Um, and also, I, I did actually notice we'd particularly spoken to West Berkshire Mencap, um, which is a great charity. I, it did also prompt me to think that um, I'm on the learning, um, the learning Disability Partnership Board, which, um, which MENCAP are a member of, but there are several other charities that support um, people with learning difficulties. And I wonder if we should be tapping into those types of boards, which cover a much broader spectrum of uh, charities in that space, rather than focusing on one or two, which are absolutely brilliant charities, but it just maybe widens the net a little bit in terms of consultation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Tony, I got, you've got your hand up next, but if you don't mind, uh, I'll come, I'm going to have uh, claim chairman's privilege here and make a few points as well. Uh, it's, it's interesting. The, the, the points that I had pre the, uh, the members' questions and discussions have all been, have all been covered. Uh, it's very interesting to me. That it was, it was a very good report. And in particular, uh, I like the, uh, the 6.3, the proposals, I think there's a 13, 14 bullets there on page 86 and 87. Uh, and they address, for example, uh, Councillor Ab's point about the, the consultations and lack of data. Uh, I noticed that uh, one of the task group's recommendations is, can we collect postcodes, please? So at least we know, at least we know who's saying what. Uh, and so it's, it's not just volume of of the consultation, it's the quality of the consultations. So I would ask, uh, I, 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 I would ask Councillor Wollaston and, and Paul Martindale to just to, to, to have a think about that before they finally submit the report. Um, the next one would be um, uh, the, the comment uh, from uh, Councillor Vickers <clears throat> about it's it, rural villages access to transport. Absolutely right. But in my experience living for a rural village, most people in a rural village actually would like to have their leisure down in the village hall. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, uh, again, that is one of the, uh, the things that comes out here. I think about the sixth or seventh bullet down uh, from the task group. They explore options for reinstating community outreach programs, uh, mm. effective use of village and community halls. Mm. Uh, so that, that's absolutely, absolutely spot on. Um, and particularly in the middle of the winter, you, the, the, the elderly, the, the young and the elderly don't want to get on a public transport and go have to travel 10, 15 miles to do something that they can just do mm. something similar in their own village. Um, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. It, it, it it hadn't occurred to me until uh, uh, Councillor um, uh, uh, Cole mentioned it, uh, James mentioned, 
the bias, it is very much sports oriented, biased. Uh, and, and it's a bit more than that. And it, it not just walking and things, he makes a good point. You know, I know lots of people, especially around my own generation, they get their leisure and traveling and going and visiting uh, National Trust heritage homes, gardens, and what have you. That's leisure. Uh, so somehow or other, I think uh, we need to try and incorporate that in as well. So that's me. That's, I think I'm trying to summarize and pull together everything. Uh, we're all more or less saying the same thing. Councillor Linden, would you like to add? Yes, Chairman, just very briefly, I, I share your view with uh, Councillor James Cole that, you know, we have to widen leisure. I mean, that is quite a lot of activity when you involve go to gardens and houses and things. It just not only exercises the mind, but it also uh, does provide... Uh, physical um uh workouts as well uh, in, in a slightly different way and um i think that uh, this is something that needs to be considered on the uh, delivery i'd also like to further thank uh paul martindale and his team for their work uh, andrew thomas in particular uh for their work in getting this uh, strategy going forward um, you know, it is key, but the major thing is the uh, delivery uh, of that. And uh, we need to be proactive as a council to support our uh, 158,000 residents, as well as others who come from outside the area to uh, get the benefits of West Berkshire. Thank you, Jim. OK, well, thank you, Tony. Uh, Paul uh, Hard, would you like to, to comment? You've heard some of the the three or four main kind of constructive comments uh, and Tony's point, which he, he's just reiterated, it's in, the, it's in his paper, that these things could probably be addressed in the delivery uh, aspect and side of the strategy. Uh, would, you, would you like to comment on that? Would you Paul, like do you want to go first? Yeah. Well, well, why doesn't Paul go first and then we can okay. finish with yes, so, Certainly the detailed responses will be uh, captured through the the delivery uh, the delivery plan. Um, I think you know just just to sort of pick up on some of the observations. I think um, you know culture and and going to sites and visiting gardens are very much part of leisure. I think the scope for this was really um, in relation to looking at sort of leisure activities that would provide sort of um, health benefits, and so physical activity was very much to the fore on that. And so the way that that exercise is done with a, a degree of continuity um, is really required to get a sort of health and physical activity benefit again. So it's just just to give the context for that uh, and, you know, just to sort of put some boundaries around it. And um, certainly we'll pick up on, on, on the postcode issues um, in terms of sort of future research. And certainly in terms of the new, new leisure management contract, we, we were very cognizant of the issue around um, people in rural areas preferring their exercise and activities to be in local villages. And within the new contract, leisure management contract, that would be part of the role of a new leisure management contractor to provide some degree of outreach services in the most deprived and inactive wards across the authority. So just a couple of observations on that. Oh, thank you for that. Howard, anything else you want to say? Just to close. Yeah, there's a couple of things. Um, in terms of consultation response, um, we actually thought it was a pretty good response, really. Uh, I, I do have a feeling at times that our, our residents are a bit sort of consultationed out. Um, you can take a horse to water if you can't make it drink, basically. And I think we did the very best we could, not just to get the, the initial response back, but also then to go out to outside bodies, charities and voluntary groups and so forth, to try and get as, as big a feedback as we could. But we can't make people respond to consultancy, unfortunately, or consultation. Um, in terms of rural areas, I completely support the, the views coming through that uh, you know, local villages do need to um, produce a, their own, and I was gonna say entertainment, it's probably the wrong word, their, their own leisure. Um, but equally, if you wanna have things like swimming pools and so forth, you do obviously need economies of scale. and. You do, we do need to focus, I think, on the on the, the major um, urban areas that we have to produce that. Um, in terms of schools access, it's again, it's a difficult one. Um, it makes a lot of sense economically to try and combine leisure facilities with schools. 
but clearly it does create problems in during the school times. Having said that, of course, it does allow for their use during school holidays and weekends. Um, final one I've got is on, uh, there was mention about no mention of walking. It is actually in 5.4 of the report, uh, enhancing access to green space and blue space through improved accessibility to open water, waterways, parks, commons, and public rights of way. So I do think we have it actually addressed that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone for well, your contribution. I, I found this report, knowing where it was just over a year ago uh, and where it is now, I think uh, uh, Paul, the team of officers, and then laterally uh, Hard yourself and, uh, and then Tony, uh, all should kind of a little pat on their back. I think we've got uh, a pretty workable uh, document that will probably garner, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, cross-party support when it goes to uh, to the executive. So uh, we've got bits and pieces of feedback which we'll summarise. And uh, thank you again for a, a very good uh, report and a very good debate. Thank you. Chairman, hey, are we Jim. going to touch on the Lido is it, or Lido as a specific, or are we going to just let that go through? I'm quite happy for you to come back on the, the Lido. I, I didn't have much to say, except that I'm you know, somebody who's brought their grandchildren there, and in fact, my children, and when I first came to Newbury, I'm really pleased that we are investing in it, and, and, I, and I think the consultation has come up with the right options. So I'd like to positively support the recommendations Great. on that, if other members yeah. agree. Yeah, I think, uh, I, I think everyone was. Okay, we just need something similar in the East now. Uh, <laughs> draw people from a long way away yeah, and I don't, I think, we, I don't we, think we should not the fact that you know we can use legislative centers and other authorities and vice versa they come to us sometimes yeah you know, you know uh, we, we've had uh, I, I always I remember my first ever council meeting uh, and one of our esteemed councillors from the east who's no longer with us uh, making the point that uh, he had been in council for about 10 years and he'd been asking for a pool somewhere in the east. And uh, and that was something like 15 years ago now. So uh, uh, sometime in the near future, it'll happen. Uh, I'm sure. Okay. Duty yeah. to cooperate. Long may it last. Yes. <laughs> let me move. Let me, let's me. let move on. Uh, the next item, uh, item eight on the agenda is membership of task and finish groups. Uh, so... Uh, we have in front of you, members, a, a, a proposed terms of reference of the customer journey task group. Uh, I, I, I first of all want to uh, to ask members to comment on that. Are there any points you would like to make about those terms of reference? Uh, any amendments that you think should really be put in, jump out at you? And if not, or at the end of that debate, I'd like to agree them, and then I'd like to try and uh, select members of the task and finish group to work on this, please. Yeah, I've got my hand up, certainly on my screen on the left. I mean, I, I, I thought it's a much needed task group, and um, I got no, <clears throat> nothing stands out, as you put it, that needs changing. Yeah, fine. Thank you. Councillor Abs. Uh, really, to more or less declare an interest, um, UX is an area which I'm an expert in. It's what I do on a day-to-day -day job, designing user journeys for, for large clients. Okay. But from from reading that, you're happy with the, the terms of reference? Uh, I, I, indeed, but um, so people are aware this is an area of an expertise I for understand. me. I understand. Thank you. Councillor Rawls? Yeah. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just to say, when we when we consider this can we always make sure we do factor in people who uh have disabilities because i think we default to people using the phone people speaking people hearing and i just like that factored in because i think it's really important yeah i think that's implicit but you were explicit and i would agree with you yeah thank you could we could we just add that uh, gordon to the whole thing and the other thing is uh, <clears throat> at one time we started off with an emergency out of ours investigation that was requested uh we've rolled that up into uh, into this one uh, i think it makes sense uh, to do so and we'll possibly as there's a separate um, uh, group of officers looking at this under 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 caroline and uh, 
I think we're probably going to have an interim report on this one. Uh, that's correct, Gordon, yes. Uh, an interim report on this whole customer journey thing, but dealing specifically with emergency out of ours. Uh, it's a pity. Uh, I don't know if Councillor Dillon can can hear me and if he's able to say anything. Uh, he was uh, he was a leading proponent of this. Uh, I, I'm I'm conscious of that and I'm happy with uh, with this. Okay, right. Okay, so if we're if we're, if we're I, I guess I don't sure I need a whole show of hands. Anybody uh, anybody detracting from the fact that we should go ahead with these terms of reference? No. Okay, so that's all accepted. Um, I, I just had an email from Sarah Clark just to sort of say that um, there was a proposal to take the topic slightly out of order, maybe to bring it out of ours through as one of the earlier topics and bring it through to the May meeting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I, I thought I just covered that actually. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've got to keep our uh, monitoring officer happy. <laughs> okay. So I. Uh, I have, a, I have a word with uh, James Cole, and James is keen to uh, chair this task and finish group. Uh, can I have uh, support? Is that, is, 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 does that find support from the rest of the of the members that James should set up and head this task group? Yeah. Okay. Good. Very much. Thank you very much. Um, now, you will note from the minutes that we approved that James, at the previous uh, OSMC, James was, was selected as chairman for the fees and charges uh, task group. Uh, and uh, he did point out to me when we were discussing this, he much prefers to do this one uh, and doesn't feel he's got the capacity to do both. Uh, I have taken a chairman's privilege and, and asked, uh, because he did such a good job at short notice, I've asked uh, Councillor Linden would he be involved on the uh, the fees and charges task group when he has agreed? Uh, can I have uh, support for that, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, gentlemen. So that's uh, that's the two chairs uh, of the task and finish group sorted. Uh, we, we the the fees and charges one that's uh, now fully full full complement. Uh, James, I'll leave it up to you. To uh, uh, I have Caroline Councillor Caroline Culver from the Greens. Agreed to. Uh... Oh, there she is. There she is. You have agreed, haven't you, Caroline? Yes. Sorry, to part... I was chairing all about um, so... Sorry, I thought. Well, <laughs> well, yes, you have. Either you've misunderstood or I didn't explain it properly. Uh, I wanted to. I asked you to. Could you participate? And you can do. Thank you. So uh, we've got that. I, I suspect from the Lib Dems that Councillor Dillon, unless you know something different. Uh, well, Chairman, I did, um, knowing he wasn't going to be here tonight, I did um, send him a message earlier today saying, who has he has he in mind as our group leader? Uh, I didn't know he'd already expressed an interest, but I was going to ask you, Chairman, if, if you could uh, hold on and, uh, yeah, and allow us to come back with a, with a name. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be a member of the OSMC, does it, to be on a task no, group? No, no, it doesn't no. have to be. Uh, yeah. it, 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 he was so interested in the particular the out of ours one. I... Yeah, I, I just know that, that okay. you know, he's got a lot on his plate at the moment and he's not been well. So yeah. um, if he wasn't going to do it, I, I hoped I would be able to give a name tonight. That's so fine. I well, able if to... you could, uh, if uh, I basically leave that action with, uh, with the, uh, the selected chairman, Councillor. James Cole to uh, to sort out, and he has to get one more from uh, the other side, uh, the conservative side of the uh, of the house. And I think we're, uh, I think uh, B is, is has been. B forward. seems to be the obvious person yep. to deal with that, and he comes from the far end of the of our area as well, which is helpful. Um, perhaps Councillor Abs should be uh, an interviewee for this group since he's told us that he's an expert in the field. There we go. Nice one. Good. Good. Okay, so that's, uh, I, I think we've concluded that item. Gordon, you're happy with it? We've got that? Okay, fine. 
so I, next item, item nine, I'd like to invite uh, Councillor Claire Rolls to provide an update on the work of the Health Scrutiny Committee. Claire. Thank you, Chair. I noticed you leave the best agenda items towards the end of the agenda. But of which course. Is always good to see. Um, so, members, our next um, Health Scrutiny uh, meet, Committee meeting is on the 5th of April. Uh, we have a pre meet um, of the committee on the 30th of March. Um, and I'd just like to uh, start by thanking Vicky Phoenix, who is a new officer to the council for all her help under Gordon Oliver's uh, guidance in terms of um, really helping us to organise ourselves a little bit better. Um, so thank you to Vicky. Um, we have uh, a, a packed agenda, and I think one of the challenges of this committee is that there are so many topics and items that come out the woodwork as we go along as well uh, to scrutinise. But just uh, for information, the pack is out next week, and we are looking to have continuing health care, Basingstoke and North Hampshire Hospitals Maternity Services, Children and Young People's Mental Health Services, which I know Laura Farris has done a debate in Westminster uh, on that. So so it's good to dovetail in, in, in on that as well. Um, Berkshire West Clinical um, Commissioning Group update, which is standing agenda item along with Health Watch update as well. Um, I also wanted to um, just reference Councillor Macro's motion, which were, was referred to the health scrutiny from full council last week, and that was regarding the Royal Berkshire Hospital redevelopment. Um, we were keen to include that as soon as we could on an agenda, but it, it's looking um, quite jammed at the moment. So I, I would do want to give that proper airtime along with the other topics. So we may actually look at a special meeting for that. And my understanding is that that whilst it's important, the urgency isn't quite there to put it on the agenda for next week. But I uh, I am um, always, uh, you know, happy to, to be challenged on that. So I just wanted to reference that. And also the fact that looking at these topics because there are so many it's different difficult to prioritize we do continue to uh, use our scoring system which i think is working really well and that's helped shape the program and we have obviously on the back of that developed our work program out further uh which will be available in the packs next week um but if anybody has any questions on that i'm very happy to take them now thank you thank you claire any questions for claire no, I've just one point, Claire. Uh, you may not know, but for several years, I was this council's representative on the board of governors of uh, the Royal Berkshire Hospital Foundation Trust. And uh, I, I well know from uh, my time there, the problems that the physical asset of the estate was giving, uh, not just in terms of physically falling down from places but the strain on the finances so i would very much like to be able to contribute to your investigation at least by uh, talking to your uh, uh, to your commission uh, thanks chairman we welcome that um and and also uh, obviously we will be make my understanding is we'll be making recommendations to come back to full council, I imagine, because obviously it's not a decision that we can make on the health scrutiny, but just obviously recommend. Thank you. Indeed. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. The next, next item, item 10, the West Berkshire Forward Plan. Uh, I've had a look at it. I am happy with it. I don't see anything jumping out. Anybody else got anything, to, any comments on it? Councillor Vickers, you, you're half hand up. Yeah. Physical hand up, and then realise I need to find the the, the the virtual one. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I just wonder why we changed the format. Um, I haven't sort of made up my mind on it, but I, I, it would be interesting to know: have I missed something? Um, where did this come about? This new format for the forward plan. It does seem to enable you to get more detail in, but. Reading, I mean, we'll be sort of doing our text the Chinese way, and these sort of long, thin columns are. Anyway, um, it, it's much, there was a specific... it, it's much clearer. Pardon? It's much, much clearer. I think I'm coming around to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. You, you could, I, I know that I, I knew the other one, you know, the, the single line going across yeah. like from, from a spreadsheet. You used to lose things that you suddenly realized, Craggy, that was important. Yeah, it didn't seem to go so far into the future now, but maybe. Um, uh, that's because we haven't got the crystal ball working yet. 
don't know. Um, uh, but it would take up a lot more pages to go any further. Well, the I, I noticed that some of the items are, we're actually going to be looking at anyhow, which is... Uh... Yeah, I mean, there was one specific comment. I mean, presumably it's on the agenda, Chairman, because, you know, we can comment on specific items. Um, and that is that, you know, in the three-year highway improvement plan, we, we have not, as far as I'm aware, got um, a current highways asset management plan. That is a long overdue... Um, item for either full exec or individual member, and I've been waiting for it for a while. But you know, the the consultation talks about it being in accordance with the council's approved asset management plan. My only comment was we don't have one at the moment to measure it against, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. Okay, and uh, I'm sure if you can. I mean, I'm thinking in, in terms course, of future work program, yeah, maybe course, something in about a year when it's bedded in. I was, yeah. I was saying in due course of time, I'm sure you'll uh, you'll put a request in to do that, and that would be that would be a good one. Okay, right then. I'll then finally move on to the uh, the OSMC work program, and uh, just a little couple of little amendments. Uh, we did refer earlier this evening to the uh, out of hours emergency uh, response report. Uh, coming in as a kind of an interim on the uh, uh, on the customer journey, and that's going to be uh, presented by Caroline on the uh, the next meeting in May, May the twenty fourth. Uh, so we have in that one we've got community safety, uh, which is the the crime and disorder crime and disorder committee, uh, standing committee, it's the annual committee, standing annual item, fostering and adoption, and. Uh, Effective employee appraisal and management training and development, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, and then the James asking James on his customer journey to uh, see if we can get a report in by September on that. Uh, so that would obviously slip into, into the September. Uh, I suspect that perhaps the economic development strategy, operational review, and or COVID recovery uh, might slip a little bit. Uh, let's see how it goes. Let's see how COVID goes. Uh, but otherwise, that's our program. We've got a pretty full program right up to the end of the year. Any comments? Any yes, Chairman. I, I mean, we've only just had the West Berkshire Local Flood Risk Management Strategy approved. It, it, it looks quite soon to be reviewing it. Um, and it's not a proposed flood risk strategy. It is now the adopted one, I believe. Um, I mean, I think it will need reviewing because it's, you know, it's a much improved strategy with more scope, and I think it needs a review. But I would be happy if that slipped a little bit to give it a chance to prove whether it, you know, I, I think it's just a bit early to take a view on how it goes then. But um yeah, that's now, just a comment. It, it's interesting enough. It's I see that was down for pre-decision, uh, which uh, so that it's 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 been Later around that. a while. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's good good point, Tony. We'll have a we'll have a look at that. It's worth looking at at some time, but uh, whether that's uh, whether that's either in some respects too late or too early, we'll have to have a look at that. Okay, Gordon, we can make a note of that. Anything else in the work program? Yes, chair. Um, Claire. Thank you. Yeah, I, if there is scope, I mean, if if you are looking to rejig jig some items, I always slightly am frustrated that the qualities and diversity strategy is towards the end of the year. Um, so if there was any scope to move that up the ladder, I think um, that would be welcomed. Thank you. Uh, and, and I would agree with you. It's It's gone down the ladder, not for any reason of scheduling. It's been... Lack of resource and focus on it. I, I think actually it's more for me public perception as well in terms of prioritisation. So I it would be great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it should have been. It should have been. I think originally at, at this meeting, uh, or, or even the January meeting. I, I was, believe it was because the office wasn't in place. Yeah, exactly right. There, were, there, there was some resource problem, not one of uh, uh, lack of priority or focus, but one of lack of resource. Yeah, uh, we'll see. If, 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 yeah, uh, I know that it's it's in it's in November. So, um. Chairman, it's Nigel Lynn. Yes, Nigel. Uh, sorry, just on that issue. Um, again, completely support the view that this is important and we need to do it um, sooner rather than later. 
It's part of the uh, the workforce strategy that we're looking at uh, with Paula Goodwin. And it is about the fact that the member staff has only just started with us in a, in a matter of um, weeks. Um, so I think the possibility of bringing it sooner is probably slim, to be honest. But, but I think just to stress that I do, I do agree about the importance of it. Um, and we've been having a number of internal discussions about how we can try and make this more of a priority for us as officers. But yeah, I don't yeah. see any answers to that. I really. agree. I'd rather have a good quality paper and a good quality review rather than something quick. OK, good. Anything else? Well, if there's nothing else. Uh, I'm going to close the meeting. Next meeting is the uh, 24th of May. Thank you very much indeed, members. Okay.